seems like everyone wants to reminisce about yesterday, wearing rose tinted glasses. People like to read about history. Remember the good old days of dangerous runoff and medium speed sweepers? But history books don't get written by reading them. So in 2012, a brand new Grand Prix circuit was constructed as part of the next chapter of American Motorsports. 890 acres of undeveloped land outside of Austin was constructed into a state-of-the-art racing venue, Cirque de the Americas. It's a big name, and it has to be. This place hosts Formula One, and Formula One has a different approach to using the word historic. They don't use it to describe something old. Oh no, Formula One doesn't do the past. They do the future. They look ahead. Toka built this place to be more than a racetrack. It's a multi-million dollar entertainment facility built purposefully with computer-aided design. The layout is a world-class thrill, if you're talented enough to learn it. It's not easy, threading through the S's, coaxing your car through the arena section, and finding every blind apex. It's a challenge unlike anything else in America. And shouldn't it be hard? Shouldn't it be tricky? You're not supposed to give everyone a trophy. If you want to be remembered, fine. Go out there and prove yourself. Finding space on the page to write your name in Speed City's history book? Now that's exclusive real estate. Welcome to Coda, gentlemen. Enjoy the ride. Motorsports fans around the world can be split into two categories. Those who are nostalgic about racing's past and those who crave technology, progress, and racing's future. There are hundreds of road courses built in the United States of America that capture that nostalgic memory of racing decades ago, but only a few capable of hosting the future of motorsport. In 2012, a 20-turn 3.45 mile road course was built in the heart of Texas. They say everything's bigger in Texas, and that's no different here for the legacy of this racetrack. They named it Cirque of the Americas, and it hosts the first round of the 2020 Redenzo Sports Car Challenge. Nearly 60 drivers will take on the course in Austin tonight, marking the start of an eight-round esports championship, taking us through June. The field has drivers from Gridlife Touring Cup, Global MX-5 Challenge, NASA, AER, SCCA, GT World Challenge, and IMSA. My name is Kyle Heyer, lead commentator for SimTV, and I'm joined tonight by rising IMSA star and Honda Racing HPD driver Tom O'Gorman, who piloted his number 37 LA Honda World Civic Type R TCR to a fourth place run in Michelin Pilot Challenge after winning at Daytona and Sebring in 2019. Tom, welcome to SimTV and Circuit of the Americas. Tonight is something special. In the wake of motorsports shutdown due to COVID-19, we go racing tonight with a big feel and big expectations. Yeah, thanks for having me, Kyle. I'm so excited about how esports has been thrust into the limelight. Uh, and this series was actually planned before that even happened. And we're just lucky enough to be bringing it to uh, the world on SimTV right at the right time uh, as everyone's kind of clamoring for their motorsports action. So thank you for everybody tuning in uh, live with us right now on SimTV as we start qualifying for the Redenzo Sports Car Challenge. And it's a 20 turn road course here, 3.45 miles. Tom, take us through a lap of Circuit of the Americas. Sure. Well, Circuit of the Americas is one of those tracks that actually has kind of a split personality. So we start with a 12-story climb up into a hairpin at turn one that actually crests right at track out and then plunge right back down that 12 stories into the S's in turns three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine all linked together. Each one longer radius and more sweeping and lazy than the last, but each one connecting to the following one up until turn nine, you get a slight run with a light kink at turn 10 and down into a heavy braking zone for turn 11. Great passing opportunity, but a pretty uh, tricky place that you can get trapped into going deep on the brakes as it gets really wide on the entry to turn 11 and narrows at the exit. 
Then the track takes a break and changes faces entirely down into turn number 12. Lots of point and shoot kind of disjointed. And the section uh, 13, 14, 15, we call that the stadium section, creates a lot of really challenging racing situations between classes and within the classes. Then we sweep through the carousel, turn 16, 17, 18, over 100 miles an hour into the braking zone for turn 19, which is a corner that you always want to be faster than it is. And then finally turn 20, another hairpin onto the front straightaway. Absolutely. So there's a lap around Circuit of the Americas. Thanks, Tom. Our classes this evening. We've got two of them based on the Michelin Pilot Challenge Series in the real world. The first category uh, being... Sorry, I have a mic issue. So our first class for this evening is the Grand Sport class, power 400 to 450 horsepower. Then uh, about 3.6 to 1,000 uh, pounds or big heavy beasts around here, Tom. But the uh, the other category that we're running with tonight is the Touring Car class. These are a little bit higher downforce, lighter, but they're front wheel drive, or a lot of drivers like to say wrong wheel drive around here. Uh, so <laughs> so taking a look at the Touring Car category, uh, up to about 350 horsepower. We'll be running with the Audi uh, RS3, uh, uh, vehicle and again high downforce machines 350 horsepower at the max and turbocharges the rs3 tonight as well weight about uh, 2.6 thousand pounds to 3.3 thousand pounds so a hair lighter than those big gs machines so let's head down to the racetrack now as qualifying is underway here tonight for about 10 minutes it's single car qualifying tom so that means you get clear racetrack all to yourself to lay down the quickest lap that you can yeah, and they have the option to complete four laps total with about 10 minutes. They're not going to complete nearly that many, but it does give them a great opportunity to reset if they have an issue, which especially looking at the GS field, uh, the Porsche came in GT4, which is the only car available right now in the iRacing service for GS, uh, is extremely challenging to drive for the first two up to three laps, depending on how long it takes you to get comfortable on those cold, cold, cold tires, almost excessively slidey in the first lap or two. Uh, so qualifying, I won't expect to see those times in, T uh, in GS really finalized until the last seconds of qualifying. TCR, the cars come up to speed just a little bit quicker, but just to kind of put a button on these classes, two very different approaches to how the classes are built. You know, the Cayman is definitely a much more performance-oriented car to start with, but it's more lightly modified for racing to get into the GS category. TCR cars, as you said, wrong-wheel drive, I would say, a little bit of a fundamental flaw being front wheel drive, not necessarily a bad thing, but it's definitely it has its disadvantages. Uh, those cars way more modified, way more downforce dependent. And in sections of this track, they're going to be faster than GS. Absolutely. So everyone getting their qualifying times in about six minutes left. What's the format for tonight? We've got two races on tap. One of them, of course, is going to be 20 minutes and it will be right in the middle of the afternoon. That's what we are right now. Take a look at the weather. Uh, 73 degrees ambient temperatures, 127 track surface temperature that's degrees fahrenheit Ooh. it is toasty out there tom and, and how is that going to factor in how tricky is this going to be compared to our second race which will be in the sunset it's going to be hard i'm telling you it's, it's going to be slippery and uh, if you're watching uh, on the cameras you can probably see the cars moving around a lot already both as the cars come up to temperature but there's just not a lot of grip right now um if you're familiar with with any being on track experience both in the real world or online 130 degree track temps is hot so we got a lot of time left in qualifying. We're going to let that kind of finish up here, but take a look uh, also at some of the drivers in the liveries throughout the field. There's Daniel Nyman. Uh, he's got a beautiful pink and black livery in his number 48 Grand Sport Cayman 718. And uh, there's a lot of really good liveries in the field here, Tom. But I think tonight uh, there's some drivers that wanted to stand out. Nyman was one of those in the Lazarus eSport car. And I think uh, it's always a good thing to stand out on the racetrack, especially when there's almost 60 cars here tonight. So how tricky are the starts going to be, especially with that hairpin in turn number one? Yeah, Coda is one of the challenging tracks to get a good start at. And I'm actually unfamiliar with the iRacing service as to whether or not they throw the green flag later down the front straightaway or not. Do you know? Uh, so we'll actually get the green flag. All the drivers will, will not be able to start until they cross uh, the Formula One finish line. So that first line that's at the exit of turn 20, they will get the green before that, but they're not allowed to accelerate until that line per the Redenzo Sports Car Challenge rules. So uh, they're going to be kind of a controlled start. Classes will be separated. There'll be a 10 second gap between the tail of GS and the head of TCR. Understood, my mistake. So uh, in the real world, they'd actually receive the green flag much further down the front straight, which allows most of the uh, the field to get onto the front straight uh, with the iRacing service. It sounds like that's not the case, which makes it way harder at the start, um, especially for the GS cars, which are gonna be kinking through turn 20, getting onto the front straight. 
TCR cars, they're going to be kind of having a little bit more time and a little more freedom on when the green flag comes out as their pull sitter chooses when the green flag goes. Yes, that was kind of the idea was to separate out the cars a little bit because we have so many heading down to turn number one. This is the first race of this series. And what that means, there's a lot of drivers that don't have experience racing each other in this group. So their first experience running wheel to wheel is going to be down into turn one, which we've already established is an extraordinarily tight hairpin uphill blind apex. So uh, to spread the cars out might not be such a bad thing. Yeah, and another interesting part about Coda is they've done um, really wide entries on a couple corners that narrow down back to the standard track width on exit. So it's really enticing to shove your nose in a place where all of a sudden you may be out of room. And turn one is one of those places as you climb up 12 stories uh, uphill, you, you know, gravity helps you stop, it only stops the fast. And then down into turn 11 is another one of those places where the track gets really, really wide on entry. So you could fit probably 10 cars side by side and then all of a sudden you're at the apex and you got to get some through somehow. Absolutely. So three minutes left in qualifying. The driver at the top of the board right now in Grand Sport is Paul Darling in the 155. He's got a 217.802 as his best lap time so far. Uh, the best driver in touring car is Kyle Herbst with a 221.2. So the class difference between pole and GS and pole and TCR is just shy of four seconds. But the there actually is some interclass mingling. The tail end of GS is all mixed up with TCR. They will be separated for the start, but the pace of these cars, very, very similar, Tom. Yeah, and it, the way they make speed is also very different. So we, re we referenced earlier that the GS cars are much less modified, but they're kind of a faster car in general. So the Cayman, faster down the straightaways, much more power. Um, it is a good handling car, especially after the tires come up to temperature. But when you're looking at the TCR car, those cars are very reliant on downforce. Uh, and they make speed in, in a way that front-wheel drive cars are special in that they can transition very well. Um, they can brake much later than you would expect. So there's kind of tricks and techniques that you can do with a front-wheel drive TCR car. And yes, it's an Audi RS3, but it is front-wheel drive, uh, especially through the S's, I would say, turns three through turn nine. I would expect that the TCR cars are probably actually faster through that se sequence of tracks because of that downforce, even relative to the fastest GS. Andrew Pelota goes to the top of the board in TCR with a 220.2. So the TCRs continue to pick up lap time. You mentioned earlier the cold tires. How different is it between the TCR and GS? And will we see the GS cars take longer to get up to temp or do you think it'll be vice versa? Yeah, big time. The GS cars, uh, with a warm up lap, you may be able to bring them up, you know, kind of scrub a lap or two off of that warm up period, depending on how aggressive you get. But uh, the GS cars just take a while to come up to temperature based on the way that they're built within iRacing service. Uh, the TCR cars, they they also take a while, but when you compare them to the Cayman, uh, they're nowhere near as dramatic with that in the modeling. So the TCR cars will get up to speed faster, and you can see uh, as, you, as you look down the timing list, the top uh, TCR car is 25th out of 55 overall. So they're about halfway up the field, which is what we expect. Um, but that means a whole lot of uh, GS cars down uh, as there's about 40 GS cars, that means at least 15 GS cars around are behind that top TCR car. So Daniel Nyman has gone to the top of the board in his number 48, Cayman 718. Ken Seal goes second quick with a 217.068. That's 14 thousandths of a second behind that 48 car, so really tight at the top of the board. Uh, Pelota and Eric Mickey separated by a tenth in TCR, and Kyle Herps falls to third in the closing moments. So while we're waiting for qualifying to complete, we want to thank our sponsors for jumping on board and bringing us this season. We want to thank Redenzo, from the most demanding driving enthusiast to the budget-conscious first-time buyer. Redenzo Radar has a radar detector perfect for you and your driving style. And by Lazy Rocket. From small stickers to full vehicle liveries, Lazy Rocket Vinyl Produce specializes in die cut vinyl and graphic design. Lazy Rocket provides the best quality decals at competitive prices with quick turnaround time. You can visit www.lazyrocket.com to learn more. Qualifying is complete. And across the line comes Andrew Pelota. He will improve. It was a 220.007. He will stay on pole. Riley Thompson at the last minute jumps up there for GS. So a 20 minute event here, Tom, this is gonna get really, really wild. We already mentioned to the drivers when they watch this back, we don't have the resources to watch every single battle because there's almost 60 cars here. It's only 20 minutes worth of racing. It's gonna be a 10 lap event. Uh, so if we miss a couple things, uh, bear in mind that we will see it most likely. Uh, we'll probably not pull you away from a, a battle up at the front of the field to keep an eye on it though. So field heads down to the grid and let's roll through our starting lineup. Gonna be on the front row tonight. It'll be, oh, I don't know if that actually reset all the way to the beginning there, but uh, up at the front, it was Riley Thompson in the number 58 that jumped to the top of the board. A couple other drivers uh, waiting to grid here. 
Ryan Kristoff, uh, one of those Grid Life Touring Cup competitors, also uh, runs the SCCA runoffs. Tom, there's a, a couple drivers in the field that we should mention. Uh, we've got Ryan Kristoff in participation tonight. Kenton Cook in the number eight. I don't think he's actually participating, but he's here tonight. Uh, again, a driver in uh, GT World Challenge America. We've got uh, Miles Gilsinger in the number 77 towards the tail of the field. DJ Alessandrini, another GLTC competitor. And, uh, you know, we got talent sprinkled throughout the field, but anybody you got your eye on tonight before we head into this event? Well, I'm not surprised to see Riley Thompson at the top. I've been kind of participating in these practice sessions as the series has kind of been built up and, and paying attention to who's quick. And I've seen him at the top of almost every session I've been with him in. I don't know him personally, but I'm not surprised to see that name in that car up there. Uh, Ken Hustiel absolutely has found pace in this uh, Cayman as he finds pace in a lot of cars. But Paul Darling has really been a lot of uh, uh, very quick in these cars as well as I've driven with him. Looking back at TCR, um, I definitely like to see uh, both Andrew Pallotta and Kyle Herbst up towards the front. Those are some autocross friends of mine. They have no uh, real world racing experience, very little track time in general, but uh, they get on iRacing and they're both fast and good with the racecraft. Uh, also love watching Brad Adams in the TCR car. He's out there. Uh, I don't have a qualifying order in front of me, so I don't know where he's starting, but uh, a couple of those guys back there will be ton fun to watch. So again, we've got almost 60 drivers lined up for what will be a 10 lap race. When this one finishes, do not leave us because we will have a short break. We'll be back for a second race and it'll be under the sunset here in Austin, Texas, which uh, trust me, we did a practice race earlier in the week. It is beautiful to watch. So make sure you're with us for the entirety of this event. It'll be about an hour and a half from start to finish as the field heads down to turn number 12. Warm up those tires, Tom. We'll get some heat in the tires and the brakes because you're gonna need it when they rumble down to turn one. Yeah, accelerating and braking is the best way to do it. You see weaving, that's not really as efficient, but these GS cars especially, you see the nose diving uh, on the pink car there, uh, up and down, up and down on the uh, brakes, trying to get the tires warm. And this is that stadium section we talked about. Now pay attention towards the apex of what's approaching turn 15, the pace car on its left at the apex, these big yellow bollards inside the curbing. Those upset the cars. They're there to break a Formula One car, really. So if you get out on those, especially in the S's, they're going to fling these cars up two wheels in the air and potentially even break something. Uh, so Coda, a lot of pavement around it, but some of it's dangerous. Absolutely. So as we head through the carousel turn, uh, turns really 17, 18 or 16, 17, 18, rather, uh, that's a, a big balance corner. Uh, tell me about that corner and how you take it in a car like this or even the TCR. It's a huge long sweeping radius it's actually three apexes and you really only have to hit the second one uh, and then you can kind of get your foot down the Cayman is dancing on the edge of adhesion with the wheel straight just kind of rotating all the way through the TCR car using the downforce to carve through front tires pulling it along and then right here turn 19 you see all that exit pavement you always want to go faster than you can through turn 19 but you end up flying off half the time because we're about to go green pace car pulls off about 10 laps on the board 22 minutes approximately Riley Thompson in the Sim Sport. Uh, Cayman will bring us to the green. Here we go for the first round of the Renzo Sports Car Challenge in 2020. Green flag flies and we're racing at Circuit of the Americas. And a mad scramble down to the first turn. Thompson pulls away. He's free and clear. The 48 and Nyman in second place. He's going to run down on the inside of Ken Seal in the Wawa car. And wow, over almost 30 Grand Sport cars, Jackson Robillard at the tail of the field there. They're all going to somehow make their way through. But I don't see any significant contact. There's a car off. That's DJ Alessandrini going a little bit wide at the exit of turn two. And he's around. He's spun at the bottom of turn two. Oh, bummer. Yeah, I'm impressed that everyone made it even through turn one. And he said how tempting it is. And uh, Riley Thompson getting away from Ken Hustle just a little bit right at the front. Back in TCR, the start of the race is underway now. Eric Mickey in the bombshell 88, gonna bring us down to the green right behind him. He's got the Sour Patch Kids car. That's the 89 of uh, Kyle Herps in P2. And a big, mag, big mad scramble down to the first turn. There's Pelota on the inside. And I think we made it through there without any incidents as well. So, so far, so good in both categories, minus a couple small incidents. Super impressive stuff. Thompson holds the lead as they exit turn number 11 in the run down to 12 now. And we're one lap into this 10 lap event, half a lap through. Thompson trying to drive away with Alessandrini out. I mean, is there anybody that can beat him? We see Ken Seal in second place, but maybe uh, he's got something for that 56 car. Yeah, the draft in the, in the GS car, not as strong as you'd think. It takes until about halfway down this back straight for it to really start an effect. 
Ooh, a side by side, 87 and 155. Paul Darling under attack there by Kirk Crum, and I think Crum's gonna get it. But right here, we talked about the stadium section. You have these corners that are almost mirror images of each other, and you can start an over under back in turn 12 that finally actually works in turn 15. It's a fascinating section of tracks. You see Paul Darling trying to come back underneath Crum, uh, actually gets into the back of him just a little bit, but uh, you're gonna keep working on that over under to get back up into that top five. Let's check back in TCR. Kyle Herbst in the 89 is taking the lead away from Eric Mickey in the number 88. All the run down to turn 12. And the draft in these TCR cars will probably be a little bit more significant uh, than in the GS cars. Is that a correct statement, you think? Yeah, but watch them dance on the brakes. They wait up the front axle and the back ends just along for the ride. You see everyone squirming around big time. Is still on the cold tires. The Sour Patch car up at the front. Eric Mickey second. Christian Gritzko first, uh, third. And these guys doing a pretty good job staying single file and waiting to play this race until maybe 10, 15 minutes in. Uh, maybe working together a little bit so that they don't have too much of a problem uh, breaking away at the front. Two laps into this 10 lap event and we got a lot of racing left to come tonight. And Riley Thompson's got a half second lead over Ken Seal. Yeah, House Seals closed the gap big time in the S's, but you see him pounding off the curbs. Uh, big upset if you, every time you touch one of those yellow curbs in these Caymans. Uh, but Cow Seal has found some pace somewhere as Thompson got the car switched on a little bit earlier, was able to pull out some gap. Uh, Ken House Seal has definitely found pace in this car in practice over the past couple of days as he's also been racing this exact car in the Gridlife iRacer series. So a lot of seat time in this car, multiple tracks. It's going to give him some confidence. Riley Thompson, like we've said, has been practicing a lot, but we've got a race for the uh, for the lead. Two tenths of a second between House Seal and Thompson. Now make it one tenth of a second as they chase each other down towards the hairpin. Thompson a little bit wide. These Caymans are all about keeping the front end grip down to the apex. If you get the car in a push on the entry, it's just not going to be able to get off the corner. You saw that. He just couldn't get the car hooked and turned at the apex of turn 11. Didn't get him a great run, but he had to use all the track out and more. Uh, and then there's a great battle for fifth on back, starting with, uh, looks like Chris Lapras. Uh, also, battles all over the place. Chris for Lapras in sixth place right now as we head down. Thompson still has the lead. Ken Alseal right to the rear bumper of him as they head towards the stadium section here, Tom. Yeah, and you see the different line choice. Ken Halseal going for a big wide open up turn 15, trying to get the power down early and a big run into turn number 16 as they enter the carousel up underneath that bridge. A great spectator point if you ever make it to Dakota in real life. Uh, and right here, you're going to watch the front tires kind of jiggle around as they're keeping that car right on the edge of adhesion, tracking out as much as you need and then back into the braking zone for turn 19. We'll see if they obey the track limits very well, yeah, mostly for the, for the most part, and down into turn 20 as they complete lap number two. So right at the front, Thompson and House Seal are really kind of breaking away, doing a good job actually of not racing each other. And that might be a smart move from Ken House Seal. He may not have the opportunity, but if he does, he's not taking it right now. And that's a good thing uh, for both Thompson and House Seal. You've seen they've breaking away a little bit from Daniel Nyman and Kurt Crumb. Paul Darling still glued to the back of that three-way battle for third. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if House Seal continues to just kind of camp in second place and wait until the second half, maybe even the last five minutes of this race, kind of sizing up his competition. And what's cool about right now in the GS class, it is a spec class of just the Cayman. Uh, but later on, we may see the BMW M4 GT4 get added into this, even within uh, this season. So uh, exciting things in iRacing going on, but battles at the front for first battle for third is a little hotter as Paul Darling looking to get back by Kurt Crum. He wants to get back up into podium contention. The top five starting to break away just a bit from Chris for Lapras and that battle for sixth has fizzled back uh, to call it about eighth. Uh, you see Zach Buchanan, Steven Cooley and Tony Chow hunting big time down into turn 11. That's the 57 of Cooley trying to get around the 40 of Zach Buchanan. Uh, they're all running wide trying to get the power down to the Cayman and then looking back at TCR, Kyle Herbst still scored at the front but he's gotten actually back to the back somehow up the front straight. Eric Mickey is now uh, in the lead in the 88 with Christian Grisco right behind him. Something happened at the front of TCR while we were looking away, or while I was looking away at least. Uh, and then those two starting to break away best just a bit from Peter Short and Caleb Lavender. So in race number two, we're going to have a, a slight field inversion, Tom. So how much are you willing to concede a position now to, to take a better start in race number two? Is this something that you're concerned about right now, or are you just worried about getting the best finish you can in race number one? 
it's all about best finish. I mean, if you're thinking about that, you're probably later maybe in the season, you know, you've got a points, uh, a points, you know, kind of pad built in. But right now it's all about just as many points as possible. These drivers have entered for the season. Uh, everyone had to pre-sign up, send in headshots, send in their car liveries. They just want to do as well as they can after all the work they put in, all the practice they put in. Uh, and, and I think I would be surprised to see someone change position at the end of the race just to get a better start for the next one at this point in the season. Yeah, next week we head to Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, Tom. So uh, that's a racetrack that's very different than this one, kind of the old style sweeping corners, that sort of situation. So uh, it'll be a different drivers up front, I would expect next week, uh, kind of a different skill set at a place like Canadian Tire Motorsport Park versus Circuit of the Americas. Yeah, and a different setup as well. I mean, meaning literally the setup on the car is very different from Circuit of the Americas. Uh, there's not a lot of similarities between these tracks at all, other than maybe the carousel, but Circuit, uh, Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, a ton of elevation change. Uh, and this track is pretty flat other than turn one. So totally different personalities as we head across the season, eight tracks, eight of the best tracks in the world, in my opinion. Uh, and, and these drivers are gonna have to conquer them all. So I think we got ourselves back up and running here. Uh, just had to adjust some graphics settings because iRacing is not necessarily the best optimized simulator in the world. So we'll head back to the short to the racetrack here in just a moment. You haven't missed a whole lot. We're still working lap number four of 10. 15 minutes estimated remaining in this race. We'll head back down to the racetrack here as Riley Thompson still out front by three tenths of a second over Ken Seal. Uh, in that 23 car, Kirk Crum in third in the number 87. And then let's head all the way back to TCR, Eric Mickey and Christian Gritzko in the number 19 is chasing him down. And there's Peter Short in the number 022, chasing him as well in third. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised at the lack of side-by-side -side action through the front of these fields, just because of how consistent the drivers have been. I was expecting a little bit more uh, maybe sloppiness and feeling each other out as these newer drivers racing, newer to racing each other. As you said, you know, Riley Thompson and Ken Housefield, the front of GS, these guys have never raced each other before, as far as we know. And uh, I was expecting maybe a little more kind of poking noses and seeing what everybody's got. And they've been pretty tame all the way through the top 10 of both of these categories as far as we've seen so far. We saw Zach Buchanan go for a loop. He got a bit of bumper from Steven Cooliari in the number 57. So he falls back to 12th after that little spin there. Evan Schickel in the 33 is up in 18th spot. He's got Kevin Zhu two tenths behind. And even deep throughout the field here, there's pretty good battles. There's Jackson Robillard in the number 98. And he started this race in 32nd in category. He's up to 20 and that's plus 12 in five laps. That's pretty solid so far for the 98. A little bit of right front damage that he's gotten from somewhere, but he should be able to continue, no problem. And a lot of that might come down to qualifying, how challenging these cars are to turn on right away. Uh, if you have a lot of pace in the car, but you can't extract it in qualifying in two or three laps, you can have, you know, 20 minutes is a pretty decent amount of time to try to get it back. Robert Gagliardo hits pit lane to get some damage repair on that number 609 car. But he'll come on down to fix that car up about halfway through this race. And in TCR battle for second place, it's Gritsko, Peter Short, and Caleb John Lavender in the 999. He's right to the rear bumper of that 22, and Short slips big time through turn 19. That's a hard corner to make work, and here he comes to the inside for turn 20. Ooh, they're going to go side by side to the apex, and this is going to give an advantage for Gritsko. They're going to drag race down the front straight now between the two Audi TCR cars, identical equipment, so it's all down to the driver. And Elias Roman and Brad Adams for fifth right behind them, but we're going to keep our eyes on that triple nine and the run up to turn one. He's going to have a look here to the inside. Backs out, thinks better of it. A little bit of contact there, pushing and shoving for that third spot. Yeah, you saw the 0 uh, the zero two two go for the Apex much sooner. It went for a little bit of a defensive line while the 999 tried to defend a little bit more. And now where's the downforce really kicks in in these TCR cars. And wow, Peter Short doing a way better job of staying ahead of the S's. You saw Caleb, uh, Caleb Lavender from behind just kind of wagging uh, maybe a car width wide on each of those Apexes. And, and you saw what that did. It just uh, stretched the lead out for Short quite a bit all the way through the S's. Great battle going on right now for ninth in GS. It's Zach Buchanan, Drew Eisenman, and Alex Barroso, ninth, 10th, and 11th. And here comes Barroso sneaking up the inside in turn 14. Now the crossover to 15. Tom, are you going to get a late apex here, or are you going to run a little wide and use the extra pavement? Oh, he's going to try. No, he's going to go into the bumper. He doesn't get a run there. He's going to give the seven a boost off the corner. Uh, and Barroso, one of the drivers that's always towards the front, flashing the lights. He wants by up in front of, uh, in front of the seven car of Eisenman. 
Uh, but Barroso, always fast in the grid by Fighter Racers League, finds pace in all the cars that he's driven. Maybe he didn't get the qualifying run that he wanted and is now trying aggressively to get his way through the field up into maybe even the top five. So up front, Ken Seal has gone through the lead over Riley Thompson at seven tenths of a second between the front two, Kirk Crumb third place in line. Then Paul Darling and Daniel Nyman. Nyman started this race in third spot. He's dropped two spots to fifth. Uh, do you think he can get back by this 155? Because Darling started in fourth and he hasn't gone anywhere. Yeah, and Darling's quick, so I, I would be, uh, you know, this this race is ebbing and flowing, and with how precise you have to take these cars to the S's, as you see, Darling just missed the entry to the a, uh, to the S's there just a little bit, and now <laughs> you see Nyman just pounding off the curbs. Uh, the car's really hard to keep under control in those situations, and like I was saying, because you have to be so precise through the S's in that way, it's really easy to lose a bunch of time, especially with the fine-tune of how these Caymans handle. Um, so I think really even in the top, uh, you know, third, fourth, fifth, could throw Nicholas Johnston in there from sixth even. Uh, one mistake, and it brings the guy behind you from two seconds back right up to your bumper. Ken Seal continues the lead. He stretched it out to one second over Riley Thompson now and continues to drive away. Eric Mickey has had no problems lately in that number 88 pulling out in front of Gritsko. He's extended that by about a second, maybe two seconds. And that Vantage Esports car running uh, behind, they actually have a GS car, that's Curtis Larad in the 37, in between them. So that, that's four lead lap position, four overall position. So what's the interaction like between the Grand Sport and the TCR categories when you're running on the same lap? You know, in my opinion, it's always easier to be the slower car, uh, unless you're at the front of the slower class interacting with the back of the, of the faster class. You know, it's pretty easy to let people go by, uh, but you see just there, Curtis the right, like the car gets away from him, and that's the scariest moment for Christian Gritzko or Peter Shore when you see that faster car just kind of losing control. These are kind of less experienced, less familiar drivers, uh, and sometimes dealing with those drivers can be very stressful and very challenging because you just don't have the straight line speed to power by that guy. Like, he can just drive right back by you. Yeah, so he just went a little wide to get out of the way and ended up kind of sacrificing some overall positions, but will continue his run. Going back in the replay just a little bit to see how the lead changed, Riley Thompson just kind of missed turn 20, ran wide, and Ken Houseel was able to make the corner, easily drive off the corner as Thompson was trying to recover. Uh, and that's what gave Ken Houseel the lead and that gap that you see at the front. Uh, but I think if both of these drivers run clean for the rest of the race, it's going to be super hard for Thompson to get back up to the bumper of the uh, 23 Houseel. Head on back a little bit deeper in Grand Sport. There's Alex Barroso in the number 15. He started his night in 10th spot, and he has gone nowhere. Mitch Welker right behind him, 14th to 11th. So a couple spots forward for the 76. And Welker has had a lot of bad luck lately. He runs the Fuel uh, League that usually runs with us on Tuesday night. And luck has not been on his side, but tonight he's able to control his own destiny in a track that he loves. He actually did the voiceover uh, for the intro sequence for tonight. So uh, I think a solid top 10 would be a good way to start the night for Welker as we work lap number seven of 10. Yeah, and if you caught that at the apex of turn four, he straddled the yellow curbing, which is both kosher in iRacing service and much faster. So some of these drivers have been practicing both qualifying laps clean and race pace laps that are maybe a little less than clean. Uh, I don't know if that was intentional necessarily by Welker specifically in that moment, but you saw him straddle that yellow curbing you can straighten out these S's a lot doing that, especially in the GS cars, but it's really risky because if you catch a tire on it, it's launching. And it looks like Mitchell Welker is going to have a look at Alex Barroso. And they'll drag race down the back straightaway towards turn number 12. And again, a lot of hard braking zones here, and perhaps they're passing opportunities, but what are the risks in passing in these really sharp uh, apex corners? And I think you mentioned earlier how much they narrow down from corner entry to corner apex. Yeah, it's just really easy to get in deep enough that as the other guy kind of turns for the corner, your momentum is just pointed the wrong way. Um, you know, you can go all the way to the inside of these super wide entry corners and then you get to the apex and you have to almost slow to zero miles an hour to make the corner. Your momentum is all pushing you out towards the exit and probably into some guy's door. Um, so that's what can be, uh, it can be to your advantage if you set it up right, but it can also be really inviting for crashes. And I've been pretty impressed with how minimal the crashing has been because of how inviting that can be, uh, especially, I mean, all the way through the fields, really, we haven't seen much of it. For the lead, here comes Riley Thompson. He's caught Ken Seal again across the line that time through. It was a 2.16.2, which was almost a half a second quicker than Ken Seal last time by. So we've got three laps to go, and we're certainly not done at the front here. Thompson hounding Ken Seal as they get down to first turn, taking a little bit of curb to get that car rotated. Now it's a drag race down to the S's. 
Yeah, and you saw the brake lights of the 23 in the lead on past the apex of turn number one. So I think Ken House Seals number 23 may be struggling with front grip just a little bit in the slow corners. Uh, we've seen Riley Thompson, as I mentioned in qualifying, he's been at the top of the timesheets in every session I've observed over the past couple days. So he's got the raw pace in the 56. Uh, and I have to imagine that Ken House Seal has gone fully defensive. Doing everything he can to get a victory here in the first round of Rodenzo Sports Car Challenge from Circuit of the Americas back to TCR. How about Elias Roman in fifth place in the number nine? Brad Adams in the 21. He's got Andrew Pelota all over him, and Pelota started in first place, sat on pole for this category. And he's fallen to seventh now, so he's trying to get back by Adams, and he's right on a bumper through 19. Yeah, perhaps caught out a little early uh, in the race on the cold tires or something else, but uh, Pilata with the pace. Brad Adams, tough guy to pass, though, as Pilata's showing the nose on the entry, catches some inside curb using a little bit more track out. Uh, but again, Brad Adams, a real-world racer, uh, races in the NASA Series and the Grid Life Touring Cup Series. Andrew Pilata never wheel-to-wheel -wheel raced ever in real life, so I might have to give the tip of the hat for racecraft to Brad Adams. You see him defending to the inside. Pilata's going to go super deep on the brakes, and they're going to make the corner with a nudge from uh, Pilata at the back, but Adams keeps the position. It's the 99 of Elias Roman goes way wide. Down to 24 miles an hour in turn number one. Now well over 100 as they negotiate the S's. That's the speed differential that you have to deal with here at Circuit of the Americas. So Roman, Adams, and Pelota, th uh, 37, 38, 39th, and overall, fifth, sixth, and seventh in category. At the front of the field, Riley Thompson has fallen off of Ken Seal slightly. We'll take you there if it gets exciting. But meanwhile, the battle is for fifth, sixth place, rather, in TCR. Lots of different line choices as these drivers exploring all of the extra pavement around Circuit of the Americas, which is all there for safety in a Formula One car. Just makes it really, really wide and easy to uh, have some forgiveness if you run wide in a touring car. But uh, again, Pilata looking for position, Adam super, super wide. And you see there, that's kind of a depiction of what that momentum difference looks like at the apex as Brad Adams, luckily they weren't overlapping, but if they had been, you see Brad Adams would have gone straight into the door of Elias Roman. Uh, but that defense that Adams just gave Pelota uh, allows Elias Roman to kind of extend his lead back out over, and now it's just Adams Pelota, uh, and now that's going to throw Ryan Carwile into the mix in the 14, uh, it's like or the 37, I should say, uh, right into it. Brandon Burke just got a bit of a tap. He goes around and loses some positions with a spin. And how about DJ Alessandrini and making his recovery after starting in fifth? He spun out in turn two on lap one here, Tom, and he's back up to 13th place, but uh, certainly not the first race of the night that he wanted. No, and what's interesting is he had a couple laps to himself as he was trying to close some gaps, and his lap times just weren't to the caliber of the leaders. He's been kind of running in the 17s. Uh, we see Riley Thompson with the fast lap of the race at a 2.16.2. Uh, so Allison Drini maybe just struggling with pace a little bit as he's uh, had to recover through the field. Uh, maybe use a little bit more of the resources so that came in up through working his way through the field and now just may not have a lot of it left as it, again, it's still so hot. 130 degree track time. Ken Housefield continues to lead by six tenths of a second. Riley Thompson uh, started off leading this race but has dropped back a little bit behind Housefield. Eric Mickey in the number 88, his TCR car is 4.3 seconds ahead of Peter Short's number 22, and he spins, he's around. He's turning around, and I think that's down in turn one, and Gritsko's gonna go on through in second. And Drama in TCR, Short's gonna drop back several positions almost outside of the top 10 here. That's a disaster for Peter Short. So he'll drop out of second place, and he'll have to try to Repair this evening in race number two, but up front in GS, Ken Seal and Riley Thompson nose to tail with two laps to go. Yeah, it looks like Thompson's just a little less in, less uh, consistent than Seal, but definitely has the speed. So it'll be interesting to see if he can stay there and make a move. We've seen multiple mistakes out of Thompson that's kind of had an ebb and flow uh, to the gap up to Seal, whereas Seal's been pretty consistent, but his fast lap over his half second off pace, which again, these cars all the same spec, pretty big gap. Uh, I was looking back at the TCR, that mistake from Short actually brought Caleb Lavender and R Elias Roman up into the, the battle for the podium, uh, and Plot has also gotten by Adams, so that battle for the final podium position in TCR is really hot as well. White flag in the air for the lead, Ken Seal and Riley Thompson chasing each other down the hill and heading towards the S's. You see tight and tidy from how seal thompson looking a little more ragged and that's how you can go fast but it's also risky 
Halseel looks like he's got that car up underneath him. I've actually been able to drive the setups that are both on Ken Halseel's car and DJ Allison Greeny's car. Ken Halseel definitely has a more stable platform by setup underneath him, and that could do him favors this late in the race. Uh, looking at how he's gotten a good run out of the S's, that's going to take turn 11 out of the equation uh, for a passing zone as the number of passing opportunities for Riley Thompson are diminishing quickly with every corner on this lap. Halseel really slow towards the apex but gets a good launch off the corner and this is going to be tough for thompson uh but he's with well within drafting distance may have a look on to the back straightaway now and they got one more opportunity down into turn number 12 to make a move thompson's close he's at 10th back can he make a move down into turn 12 now how seal makes him go the hard way around and they've got lap traffic as well going out of the way that's great heads up driving but they're still side by side off the corner thompson actually held the outside line and again get the inside line into turn 13 entering the stadium section how seal now if he can hold it there is going to have the inside for the next corner this is that awesome racecraft we talked about later uh, earlier in the broadcast how seal deep on the brakes down to the apex got to park thompson here no thompson grabs the inside curb and the car gets away from him just a bit now how seal will have the advantage with the inside line up into turn 16 just has to hold on to it for two more corners really uh, as they are now nose to tail through the exit of the carousel and into the turn 19 area. Thompson has a look. Here he comes up the inside for turn number 19. Riley Thompson trying to recover his night as Ken Alseal has gone to the front. Who is going to get back to the checkered first? Final Alseal corner. Seal textbook turn 19. Final corner for these drivers, How Seal and Thompson. Nose to tail as they come to the line. Ken Alseal gets it done in race one of the night at Circuit of the Americas. Wow, what a race there at the end between those top two, How Seal and Riley Thompson. Eric Mickey in TCR looks like he's going to drive away no problem in his number 88 bombshell machine as Gritsko is a bunch of seconds back, but it, the disappointment is for Peter Short, eighth place in TCR after running in second and maybe having a look at the lead there for a couple laps. Yeah, but look at this, three wide for third in TCR down the back straight, the 99 car of Elias Roman, the 999 on the outside, and Christian Gritsko in the 14 in the middle. Pilata trying to get all the way up there. Brad Adams waiting for these guys to do something rowdy, clunks into the apex of turn number 11, uh, 12, I should say, and Pilata now side by side with Brad Adams. Oh. They clunk one more time. Door slam. Brad Adams gets a whole chunk of the left side door of the 14, and there's car around the 99. He's gone for a loop. And that was the car out of, uh, looks like that was eighth place in TCR. Yeah, Roman actually just got turned by Lavender. That was the battle for third. And it looks like Lavender uh, just kind of got a little too deep in there and doored him, turned him. And now Brad Adams with some great racecraft again, real world racing experience applying into this simulator uh, has moved all the way from sixth up to battling for third. Goes for the look in turn 19. They're almost side by side. No, oh. thinks better of it as Lavender sweeps across the nose in the DHL car. Brad Adams, one more chance to get onto the podium. Down. Carlisle trying it. Final corner. Adams in third, trying to get to second. He won't be able to get there. Caleb John Lavender will come home in second. It'll be Brad Adams in third as they come across the line. All the way around, excuse me, third, fourth, and fifth, Ryan Carwile in that 71. Andrew Pelota finishes sixth, Chabelski seventh, and Peter Short will come back in eighth place for TCR. Okay, well, we got through that. Uh, here's a look at your race results. And so, uh, Tomo, uh, while all that was, all the chaos was going on, I was informed by the YouTube chat, thank you for the people that mentioned that, that uh, apparently 60 cars trying to broadcast that in iRacing will not work very well, as we discovered, unfortunately. So uh, I'm going to complain on the iRacing forums after this at a very, at a very high <laughs> extreme level. Uh, that was not very fun to watch. I apologize. We'll make sure that race number two is a little bit better. Don't uh, go anywhere because we'll be back in just a few minutes, but we're going to scroll through your results, Tom. Uh, race two, a little Bit cooler conditions with the sun going down your thoughts as we head into the second race of the night i think there was a lot of learning that just happened in that first 20 minute race uh, of this season we have 16 races points championship we saw mistakes made and i think like i said we saw a lot of learning happen that these drivers are now going to go take uh to race number two both on in cooler conditions totally different track temperatures uh, different lighting, everything changes at that moment, but also these guys have 20 minutes of information about each other that they can now go use against one another in the next race. Uh, as we see Ken Seal, if you can't see it, doing donuts, celebrating race number one uh, of 16 in the Redenzo Sports Card Challenge, uh, winning in GS. So there's your unofficial results. We're going to jump to break for about 10 minutes. We'll be back with you for the start of race number two. Stay with us.
Would you like to have a career in racing? And if so, what would you like to do, Dale? Well, I, I, you know, I want to be a race car driver someday. That's, you know, it's all I've ever known, racing. What did you want to be when you grew up? So many people live a life of what if. Go to school, go to college, get a nine to five. This is how we support our dreams, with a safety net. Because we're unsure about taking a leap of faith. Because we're afraid. As we grow, we cross things off our list of dreams. We cut them down, make them realistic. Having control of things is reassuring. But for some, the rush of being out of control is what gives them life. Some say racing cars is reckless. Maybe they're right. Out of bounds isn't just cheating, it's cheating death. Football fields made up in seconds. Decisions made in instants. For the people that climb behind the wheel of these cars, they're not driving it. They become part of it. It's an extension of the body. As a child, I looked up to these people, faces hidden by helmets. The less you saw of the driver, the more believable it became that they were, in fact, just part of the machine. It's easy to forget that inside the cockpit is someone just like us, but with the mindset that fear is a motivation, not a barrier. But the reality is, race car drivers are not like us. They never cross anything off their list of dreams. They just keep writing more. Daytona. Le Mans. Indianapolis. Monaco. Places that used to be just places. Now international symbols of victory. To those that enjoy the spectacle of racing, the two feet of concrete and steel cables are a wall between us and them. Between sitting in the grandstands and standing in victory lane. These same walls are a stark, immovable reminder that racing drivers put their lives on the line for the sake of the thrill and entertainment. Despite the risk, despite the heartbreak, despite the cost. There are some on the sidelines who are fascinated by the danger. They are fascinated by speed. Fascinated by the undying desire to be just a little bit better. Their dreams? A race by geography, finances, or the lack of a famous last name. There are some who once wished to be a race car driver, but aren't because they didn't get the chance. And they thought they'd spend the rest of their lives watching their heroes on television, or from the other side of the fence. They thought it was impossible to climb into a race car, so they crossed it off their list. But it's not impossible. There is a ticket to the other side of the fence. For those who want it bad enough, this is your chance.
It seems like everyone wants to reminisce about yesterday, wearing rose-tinted glasses. People like to read about history. Remember the good old days of dangerous runoff and medium speed sweepers? But history books don't get written by reading them. So in 2012, a brand new Grand Prix circuit was constructed as part of the next chapter of American motorsports. 890 acres of undeveloped land outside of Austin was constructed into a state-of-the-art racing venue, Cirque de the Americas. It's a big name, and it has to be. This place hosts Formula One, and Formula One has a different approach to using the word historic. They don't use it to describe something old, oh no. Formula One doesn't do the past. They do the future. They look ahead. Toka built this place to be more than a racetrack. It's a multi-million dollar entertainment facility built purposefully with computer-aided design. The layout is a world-class thrill, if you're talented enough to learn it. It's not easy, threading through the S's, coaxing the car through the arena section, and finding every blind apex. It's a challenge unlike anything else in America. Shouldn't it be hard? Shouldn't it be tricky? You're not supposed to give everyone a trophy. If you want to be remembered, fine. Go out there and prove yourself. Finding space on the page to write your name in Speed City's history book? Now that's exclusive real estate. Welcome to Coda, gentlemen. Enjoy the ride. Welcome back live to Sim TV in the first round of the Redenzo Sports Car Challenge from Circuit of the Americas. My name is Kyle Heyer, joined by Tom O'Gorman tonight, and this is race number two of the evening. In race number one, we had some technical issues, uh, some of which are in my control, some of which are not. So we're going to just try to hope that we don't have the same issue for the second race tonight. But Tom, uh, a phenomenal race at the front of the field between Riley Thompson and Ken Seal. We're going to have a little bit of a field invert here at, at, towards the front of the grid in each class. So uh, what can Ken Seal and Riley Thompson do different this time? They're going to be starting behind some other drivers. So uh, how are they going to be able to negotiate their way through the field without getting in trouble? Is it going to be taken easy or are you going hard right from the get-go and hoping you live? Well, it kind of depends on, uh, like I said, I think at the end of the other broadcast was a lot of learning just happened and uh, certain situations where, um, you know, we saw Riley Thompson had the pace but made multiple mistakes throughout the race, which ultimately gave Ken Halsey the opportunity to just kind of run consistently, even though his fastest lap was six tenths off of Thompson's. Um, he was able to just kind of keep it steady, protect at the end of the race. He had the car underneath him and, and win the race. Um, we saw, I think, two big things pan out in that first race, and the first one being mistakes on the first lap. Uh, as both of these cars, the TCR and the GS car, are very challenging on the first lap, but particularly the GS car, which caught out drivers even as experienced as DJ Alessandrini uh, and wreaked havoc through the field in a couple of places. Um, but also the, uh, the race crafts and uh, how the mistakes compound at a track like this, especially in the first half of the lap, um, that both allow for big time losses to close gaps between cars, but also allow for relatively easy passes to take place, which is how Ken Seal ended up getting the lead from Riley Thompson. So, you know, my keys learning from race number one going into race two would have to be that uh, you have to make it through lap one and you don't necessarily have to do it by gaining a ton of positions, but you also have to absolutely and big time minimize mistakes because they seem to be really uh, kind of damaging people's races, uh, even to a terminal level. Um, whereas maybe in other cars and other tracks, mistakes are a little more salvageable. Absolutely. So about a minute left in warm up here. We got a timing and scoring screen on the left hand side of the of your monitor. So you can take a look at who's laid down times in warm up. Daniel Nyman in the 48. Uh, he had a really good start, but ended up falling back through the field a little bit later in the race. So, uh, I mean, he, he's one of those drivers, I think, has the capability of winning this thing. And he'll be ahead of the drivers that won in race number one of the night. Also, DJ Alessandrini, uh, he crashed at the start. I think he's definitely a favorite for race number two tonight. Yeah, and Dan Nyman actually heard from one of his buddies, BJ Roman, uh, who I think is in this place, maybe? No, somebody else. Um, he's actually a, a pro Forza driver and uh, came over to iRacing 
uh, at some point is, is also extremely fast as we see on iRacing. Um, but it's kind of cool, these drivers cross, cross platforms within eSports. Um, one of the other things I was going to point out, his lap time here in practice with only uh, one lap, so that was an out lap basically, a 2.16.7, which is almost as fast as the fastest lap from the previous race, and that's all down to track temp. Track temp is 100, uh, not, not close to 100, 60 degrees less in this race. Uh, go down from 130 to 73. Yeah, so again, ambient temperature, 70 degrees Fahrenheit for this second race. 73 on the racetrack, wind two miles an hour out of the north. And it's just after 7, uh, about to be 8 p.m. here uh, in Austin, Texas, as the checkered flag flies in the warm-up period. We're going to head down and grid them up for race number two tonight. And Riley Thompson is quickest in warm-up, and he was just shy of victory in the first race, and he'll try to get it this time, uh, starting from a little bit deeper in the field. So down to the racetrack. We'll bring you as the sun sets on a beautiful day here in Austin, Texas for the first round of the Redenzo Sports Car Challenge. We want to thank our sponsors again, Redenzo. From the most demanding driving enthusiast to the budget conscious first time buyer, Redenzo Radar has a radar detector perfect for you and your driving style. And from Lazy Rocket, from small stickers to full vehicle liveries, Lazy Rocket Vinyl Produce specializes in die cut vinyl and graphic design. Uh, make sure you visit www.lazyrocket.com to learn more. So on the poll for race two in GX, it's going to be Andrew Rasmussen in the number 11 and Jackson Robillard, a driver from the global MX-5 series in the real world. He's got experience, a lot of experience in the MX-5 car. Kevin Zhu in third place. It'll be DJ Alessandrini lining up in fourth, and that is a very dangerous place for Alessandrini to be for the rest of the field. Yeah, if anybody is the one to watch, I think it's Alessandrini and... Uh, again, not the start he wanted to the season, not the start he wanted for last race as he had that incident. Uh, just kind of self-induced, I think, at turn two um, in the first lap of that race. But starting uh, of the drivers at the front, I think he has the biggest opportunity to capitalize on, uh, again, Count House, Ken House Steel all the way down in 18th. So the top 18 inverted, uh, that's got to be about half the field, I think, in GS. And then the pole, Chris DeShong in TCR inherits the pole. Yeah, his number 41 will start in first place right alongside Benson Ty in the 503, then Evan Adams and Louis Alessi in third and fourth, Miles Gilsinger in the 77, and Andrew Mickey in the 86. There's about 48 cars in this race, so that's down significantly about seven or eight from race number one, so hopefully we won't run into those uh, graphical issues again. I will report that as a bug because it's most certainly a bug, so we'll get that sorted out for next week at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And make sure you're with us next Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. because we'll be heading over the border up to the north and heading to Bowmanville, Ontario for our second round of the season. So Andrew Rasmussen- Something of note. Yes. Oh, sorry, real quick. Something of note, the entire TCR field is inverted because of the car count. All 18 cars completely inverted. Oh boy. So that means that Eric Mickey, the race winner from race one's all the way at the tail. He's got a lot of work to do to grab some points in this second race. So on the formation lap, heading down through the carousel and turns 19 and 20 for our second race. The nice Rasmussen and Robillard on that front row. And Robillard has experience here in the MX-5. How much of that transfers to a GS car? It's relatively helpful. Um, if anything, it's the racecraft experience of having driven here, knowing where the positions are that you can get Brian people. And again, this, this, the way that this track snakes at the beginning and the way the track points and shoots towards the end, you can set up passes if you have experience with how the track works much more easily than someone just learning. Waiting for the green flag to fly here as they enter and exit turn number 20. Can't go green until they hit that line that you see off in the distance there. Rasmussen and Robillard waiting, waiting, waiting. There it is. Green flag flies and racing for round two of Lorenzo Sports Car Challenge from Circuit of the Americas. And a run down to turn one. Rasmussen pulls clear in his purple number 11. Yeah, huge jump from Rasmussen. He's going to be single file up into turn one, but Robillard looking for it. Toes wide, and Allison Drini trying to sweep around the outside. He's going to use all the track and more, but he's all the way up into second, potentially, down into the S's on lap number one. Oh, he's got it. An aggressive move for second place. DJ Alessandrini finds his way there. Robillard to the inside. We're not going to be able to stick through there through the S's. They're going to string their way through five, six, and seven before they head to turn number eight. Meanwhile, in TCR, they're just now working their way towards the start finish line for the start of their race. It's Deshong, Benson, Ty, Miles, Gilsinger, Alessi, and Herps, your top five. Green flag for the TCR field as they make their run down to turn one Tom. Super late start from Deshaun. He's the one that gets the control when that happens and you see the jump it gave him. He's clear of the field heavily or comfortably I should say down into turn one. Makes the dive but they're still side by side. Benson Ty, Evan Adams 
and then the rest of the field. Kyle Herbst is one of the drivers that has a great opportunity to capitalize as he had an incident. Oh, but then Brad Adams turns the 0-22 of Peter Short. They had that battle for third at the end of last race. This time, Short's not going to be able to go back to it. Alessandrini is at the front, and here comes Rasmussen back on the inside. Drag race down the back straightaway on the first lap here at Coda. We'll see if Rasmussen can hang on as they head towards turn 12, Tom, and that's a good place to be is on driver's left heading down to turn 12. Yeah, if he can hold the outside, we've seen he get the inside for turn 13, and that's the advantage. So DJ Alessandrini trying to sweep the outside, turns in late. He's going to hold it there, but... Rasmussen does a good job getting the power down. There's just a little bit of overlap between these two cars as they come into turn 13. Allison Drini parks it at the apex, powers off. Rasmussen wide on that curb, which can upset the car. And Allison Drini now goes defensive as he sweeps across the nose. The number 11 trying to run wide and sweep back underneath, going for that over-under run. But Allison Drini does a good job getting the power down, and he's looking to a clear second lap to try to put a gap on this field. He's free and clear. Meanwhile, back in TCR, Deshaun's got a massive lead, 2.2 seconds. Gilsinger up to P2. Then it's Benson Ty in third, Andrew Mickey in behind. It's a whole swarm of race cars in the middle. Of it. Are we four wide on the back straight? Looked like it for a moment. That's Brad Adams in the middle of that. Uh, it looks like Andrew Mickey. No, that's the 88 of Eric Mickey. Race one winner right behind him. And right behind them is Ryan Carwile in the 71 as they all slide down. There's Pelota out wide over the edge of the curb in turn 12. And that's pretty standard full field invert chaos that we're watching right here. I'm looking at Andrew Pilata looking really racy on Brad Adams. They were almost side by side at the finish of race number one. They're still side by side for race number two as they're trying to come from the absolute back of the field to get back up towards that podium. And look, Christian Grisco got a little bit shoved off course by the uh, the triple line. It's Caleb John Lavender that's got rubbed up a little bit wide. And Grisco's going to go back to the inside through the carousel. A bunch of right-hand corners. That's advantageous if you're on the inside against the curb. Right in front of them, Elias Roman. He's on the outside of Benson. Ty will complete that pass for fifth place. These guys want to get this racing out of the way as early as possible because the longer they spend fuddling around back here, the longer they have at the front guys like Chris Deshong to just build that gap. Oh, Paul uh, Darling. Right now. Paul Darling around in the middle of the field and the S's. He's got a bunch of damage on the front of that 155. Let's go back quickly and see what happened to him. There was definitely contact. And whether or not it started with or ended, oh, he just got a big chunk of those yellow anti-cut curbs, Tom, and got looped around. Yeah, like I said, designed to break an F1 car, and they're going to throw a Cayman in the air, and that's what we saw just there. And looks like, oh, is Mitch Welker had a spin. In the 76, he's going to go around for a loop. That is down, I believe, in turn 11 in the hairpin, and he'll get back rolling. But the bad luck that he had before is going to continue in 18th now for him. For a second, here comes Kevin Zhu in the 243 up the outside of Rasmussen. Rasmussen re-clears him as they head into 12. Yeah, Kevin Zhu doing a really good job capitalizing on that front row start, uh, second row start, and keeping himself up on the podium at this point with Drew Eisman and uh, Jackson Ribelard right behind him. Dick into the back of Andrew Rasmussen, and remember, Rasmussen started on pole, but he's theoretically the slowest car. Oh, turned cars. around, Eisenman spins in turn 15 off the nose of Jackson Ribelard. And Eisenman, who started this race in sixth place, is going to tumble down the order all the way back down towards 20th. And look who's up here, uh, sweeping around the outside, uh, almost onto the podium, Ken Seal, around the outside of Jackson Robillard. To the inside, he's gonna tab fifth place, he's gonna use him up a little bit, yes. Push him out wide in turn 19, Seal back inside fifth, after he started in 18th place, it only took him two laps to get inside the top five. And more importantly, he's put a ton of cars between he and Riley Thompson. Riley Thompson still side by side with a 40 car, Zachy Cannon, coming on the front straight, nearly half a straightaway behind to all the progress Ken Seal has made. Tony Chow to the outside, that's uh, Stephen Cugliari in the 57, that's right up here as well as they enter turn one. They look like they're gonna be three abreast, maybe a little bit of contact between Chow and Cugliari, but right in front of them is Kirk Crum in the bombshell 87 up to seventh. Oh, they're all over the place now. How Seal makes it through somehow, that's gonna put him up onto the podium as we saw Zhu get together with Lapras. Ken Seal splits the difference, had to check up a lot, and now he's got Robillard all up underneath him. Yeah, Kevin Zhu went for a loop there in the 243. Up in front, though, Alessandrini leading by almost five seconds over Rasmussen. I think he's got this one in the bag here, as long as he doesn't make any mistakes. He's also got to keep in mind if he catches the back of the TCR field, he's got to be really smart about making decisions cutting through there. I don't know how much overlap we saw in race number one, uh, and we may see less as the fields have been inverted for this race, but it's still a possibility. Kyle Herbs up the inside of Andrew Mickey. This is for fourth in TCR, and the 89. Pulls up into the top five after starting in seventh, so he's climbing forward. He's been really competitive so far. 
And we've known Kyle Herbst for a long time running the Washington DC region SCCA races. And let's jump back up to seventh. Uh, that's Kuliari and Daniel Nyman in the 48. They're running nose to tail down the back straight, heading towards turn 12. Here comes Nyman. Take a look on the brakes. Not going to have a look. Here comes Zach Buchanan deep on the brakes. Three wide. Oh. And they're somehow not going to tear them all up as they get down to the hairpin. Really good heads up driving from especially Riley Thompson on the outside to realize they were three wide. He's the one that's got to be safest of everybody through this because... Max Lufer in the number 688 to the inside of Riley Thompson. Finished second in race one, did Thompson. Lufer wants to push him out wide over 15. He takes the runoff area behind him. Johnson to the 28, up the inside. Oh, oh spin! Oh, he saves it. Lufer saves it. Lufer, absolutely incredible save. These cars are really hard to save when they get sideways. Johnson got into him after he pinched him down to the inside. Uh, and these guys kept it clean through the carousel somehow. That could have been a big mess. And that's Zach Buchanan on the inside trying to take 11th place away. Andrew Rasmussen's Rasmussen looped it around. around. And that's going to promote Ken Halseel all the way up to second. A great start to this championship for Halseel. Yeah, he'll certainly walk out of here the points leader if he can hang on to second. It's eight seconds up the road to DJ Alessandrini, so that's kind of out of the question. But Jackson Roller are now all over Ken Halseel, pushing the issue for second place now as they head towards the S's. Ooh, and we have a really chaotic blend of cars that started uh, towards the front of this race and cars that finished towards the front of the last race now intercepting each other right here in the top five to ten. That's where all this crazy racecraft is coming in. And Zach Buchanan now side by side with Luke for once again into the S's. Oh, Buchanan taking a huge chunk of curb, four tires in the air, and he's going to keep it on course but lose a little bit of time. And, you know, sometimes that helps the car rotate, Tom, but those curbs are a little bit too tall perhaps to be using in a GS car. Yeah, way safer to strap them than it is to try to pound off of them. Even the TCR cars have launched through there, so dangerous, dangerous. But it's also hard to see. You know, you don't necessarily know you're going to pound off of them until you're looking at the sky when you've got a car right in front of you. Alex Barroso right behind him as he's going to take a look down into turn number 11 on the inside lane. We'll see if he has a look. And he'll tuck back in line. And here goes Mitch Welker. Contact. And up goes the 15 at the exit of 11. Gets rubbed off. And off the track he goes. Does a good job collecting it, and he might be able to salvage this one. As again, a bunch of these drivers started towards the front, and they're working their way towards the back as the faster cars that started maybe 10th through 18th with the invert are now trying to work their way back up towards the front. Nicholas Johnson and Riley Thompson. This is for seventh place in Whoa. Grand Sport. Whoa! Welker gets into the back of Eisenman, and Eisenman goes for another slide. Still keeps the momentum going. Not a lot of body damage on that car for how many wars it's been in, but he's doing his best to try to salvage this one and stay in front of Kevin Ju now for right about 15th. He went sailing off course. There was contact with Mitchell Welker into the braking zone. That's what sent him way, way off course. He got it back rolling in 16th place, working lap four of 10 now. Back yeah, in those guys have already been racing really hard. Everyone needs to kind of take a deep breath at this stage in the race about halfway through uh, and just make it to the end. Back in TCR, here comes Elias Roman on Miles Gilsinger, and they're making their way down towards, I believe that's turn number 12, and Roman to the inside, door to door, into the braking zone. Roman had that unfortunate last lap incident on the previous race. He's looking to salvage that one with now second place, trying to keep it on the podium, but we call out Kyle Herbst at the beginning of this race, was on pole for race number one, I believe, or at least towards the front, but had an incident that kept him uh, off the podium outside even the top five for race number one. Now trying to get on the podium for race number two after he inherited that nice forward starting position with the invert. Almost halfway in this race, and there's trouble up the road. It's Max Lufer around. This is turn number one, I believe, and he's gone for a loop, and he got a little bit of help from the 40 of Buchanan. These two raced extensively during the practice races last week, and here's a look from up above as it went down into turn number one. It was Buchanan on the attack, and it just tightens up, and I'm not quite sure that there was enough room for a car on the inside, but they tangled, and Lufer and the 40 of Buchanan will lose spots because of that. Looking back right at the top five, Daniel Nyman, one of the drivers with uh, a really good performance in race one, has worked his way up to sixth. And Riley Thompson, second place from race one, is now in seventh. Tony Chow has done a great job to hold that number 68 car, now working their way through turn 11, up into the top, or keeping it in the top five, I should say. Uh, the rest of the drivers, other than he and Jackson Robillard, who's still in third, uh, have kind of worked their way up a bunch of positions to stay where they're at. Tony, to get to where they're at, I should say. Tony Chow started in fifth. He's managing to hang on to it, but Daniel Nyman right behind him is all over the tailpipes as they head down towards turn number 12. He's going to lock up on the binders here and try to get past him. 
And a Lazarus eSport car is going to be side by side as they head to the stadium section, but he's on driver's left. That's the wrong place to be if you want to get the pass done. No, and now he's under attack by Thompson, who capitalizes on that side by side, and he's going to try to sweep across the nose of the 48 before they cross into turn 15, gets there. So Tony Chow doing a great job defending in the 68 against two of the fastest cars on track, but Thompson capitalizing on Nyman getting around in the 28 of Nick Johnston, trying to go with him, now attacking uh, the Lazarus car of Nyman as well. Side by side, that's Johnson on the inside lane and hugging the curb through the carousel. Tom, how slippery is that painted curbing through the carousel? Maybe it's it's good to hook to get the car rotated or is that too treacherous in these cars? It honestly helps. It's not so much in the game as in real life. It really, really helps as they go for a double attack on Tony Chow trying to hold the outside. Thompson goes through. Nyman going to try to go with him. Johnston runs way wide. Uh, trying to get a run to go all three, maybe, by Tony Chow. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the paint on this race, not too bad. Whoa, wow, that was Johnson tight. Way inside. <laughs> he made a hole. There wasn't one to exist. But down into turn one, here comes Johnson up the inside. And Nyman side by side. Maybe a little bit of a door rub at the exit Rubbing, of turn one. Leaning on each other. And they all go by Tony Chow. So Chow held up fifth for all, over half the race. Now back to eighth. Oh, but contact. Get together. And Johnson slips and slides. He's going to have to. No, he somehow keeps it on course. Chow trying to get back by him here as they head through the S's. But that was a great recovery after getting knocked sideways at almost 100 miles an hour. And this is the race of epic saves. Oh. Now as Nyman goes around all by himself. Looped it around, got the car unsettled. He'll spin right in front of the GS field. They have to back up onto the runoff area to avoid a collision and get that car looped back around for the start. Tony Chow losing one more spot to Steven Coulieri, who's getting out up into the eighth position, I think, with Nyman losing that spot, but Riley Thompson up to fifth. Not nearly the gain that Ken House Seal saw, but pretty close to it. These guys are going to be a ton of fun to watch this whole season. Checking in on second place, Kyle Herbst and Elias Roman in the 89 and 99. Battling for position three tenths apart from them as they head their way down towards the S's and stringing their way through the curbs. And look who is in fifth position all the way from the back. Eric Mickey in the 88 is under uh, attacking Miles Gilsinger. Uh, they actually crossed the line in a different order than this, so Gilsinger got back by in turn one somehow, but I have to imagine Eric mickey has got the car to pass him. He needs the opportunity to do it as he shows the nose into the apex of turn six. Maybe thinks better of it, tucks back in. Yeah, Gilsinger looks like he's struggling with front grip, a ton of steering oh. lock on the front of that Audi as uh, now Eric Mickey trying to see through that number 77 car, get a run now, looks to the inside exiting nine and will easily pass him down towards him. Uh, turn 11. Yeah, he's got it now. He's got position as they head down towards 11. And Eric Mickey has been so impressive in this 88 car to start the night. And of course, one race number one. He was actually concerned that he jumped the start in race one. And the uh, race control looked at that and decided no penalty as of now, but will be looked at later. Uh, I don't think they'll act on that. But Mickey was concerned and actually kind of reported himself about it. But uh, that's something you never want to do, Tomo, is, is turn yourself in. You want to let them make that call on their own. Yeah, that's a sports sportsman move for sure. Uh, but Mickey now looking forward to the podium if he can get there. Andrew Pallotta still lurking in the background of Gilsinger as Gilsinger is looking to the outside, but he's not going to make the corner. Shoots off the exit of turn 12 by a bit, and that's going to give Eric Mickey the opportunity to try to gap the 77 car just a little bit uh, as they're working their way towards uh, turn 15 and into the stadium section for the carousel. How about Jackson Robillard in third place? The number 98 started up towards the front. Again, Global MX-5 competitor in the real world for Robillard Racing. And Kurt Crum right behind in the 87 uh, in his bombshell motorsports car. He started in 16th place. He's up 12 spots to fourth and continues his climb. Yeah, and Kurt's been the faster of these two cars consistently over the last couple laps up until he's caught Robillard. So the tip of the hat for pace goes to 87, uh, Kurt Crum. But we saw last race, Riley Thompson was the faster car and wasn't able to do anything with Ken Housiel. Uh, as DJ Alessandrini, I was going to note, up at the front, running clear laps, uh, almost a second faster than any lap of last race. Uh, so he's definitely got the pace uh, and will clearly uh, seven seconds at this time. Uh, between he and Ken Hasil. Yeah, definitely not a nail biter up at the front of GS, that's for sure. He's been setting incredible laps, Oop. but a bit of a lock up. Side by side for third in GS. Crumb's got the run, but they've got lap traffic in front with the 46 car floating wide and letting them go. 87 gets it on the, keeps it on the track, gets the power down, and will jump in front of Jackson Robillard. Kirk Crumb now onto the podium in GS. 
But look in the background, the orange Riley Thompson machine is lurking, and Jackson Robillard's the next one on his hit list to get up onto the podium. Yeah, Riley Thompson again started 17th. He finished second in race one, back up to fifth place. He's flying, but uh, he's got a, only a little bit more ground to make up before he's got fourth and third on his radar. So, uh, pun intended. So he's working his way up towards the front now in that 56, and he's got two cars fighting. That, and as they fight, Tom, they're slowing each other down. Yeah, big time. Saw just how much even going side by side for one corner can hurt you, uh, let alone a quick mistake. Which we've seen a lot of mistakes and a lot of wars in this race. And checking back in TCR, Ryan Carwile in the 71. Haven't talked a whole lot about him in this race. 14th to 7th, though, plus 7 for him. And Caleb John Lavender, 7 tenths back in the draft on the back straightaway. Guy to watch right, me, right now for me is Andrew Pallotta in fifth in TCR. He's really fast. He was many seconds faster than Eric Mickey, who was right in front of him and race for one winner. Uh, so the 14 car, Andrew Pallotta, on the move in TCR. He's got the pace and he's working with Eric Mickey right now to catch the podium, uh, which are Kyle Herbst and Elias Roman next on the track, second and third, and they're within striking distance of one another. So if those two start racing, we're going to have a four-way battle for uh, second place back in TCR. Yeah, and again, uh, the 14 car, he actually doesn't have any lap times recorded because every lap that he's run has had an off track somewhere or somehow. And drivers, again, they're, they're instructed in terms of track limits. This is always a discussion when we come to the Circuit of the Americas. It's fine to run wide, but if you come back on course and cause an incident, you're subject to penalty. So you're allowed to run out off the edge of the racetrack, but it's not always faster necessarily. Riley Thompson, Jackson Roblard, Kirk Crum, fifth, fourth, and third. And Nicholas Johnson, 1.6 seconds back. So we're going to have a fight in GS as well before the end of this thing. And Ken Seal last time by was about two seconds off the pace, a 217.094, Tom. Maybe just ran out wide, made a mistake. And, and this is one of those racetracks that's so long uh, that even missing a tenth or two in a corner will put you way back. But there's also a possibility that he got himself a slowdown by running wide in turn 19. Yeah, very possible, and that's we heard from a number of drivers between the races that they had slowdowns here and there that really affected their races, and kind of talked about at the beginning, the, the, the mistakes uh, seem to be really challenging the drivers tonight more than they might at other tracks. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, as we have side-by-side, -side, Riley Thompson and Jackson Robillard for fourth. Robillard trying to hang on in his number 98. This would be a spectacular result for him, and he's had a lot of pace all week long, but he's had trouble actually making passes. He seems like he's much better on the defensive, and he's doing that right now with Riley Thompson behind him a little bit wide in 19. That's a no-no. They'll give you a penalty for running out wide there, but Thompson right up to the rear bumper as they enter turn 20. I just realized my playback was not live for a little bit, so I'm sorry if what I was saying wasn't making any sense, oh, Kyle. Made sense but, to uh, me. <laughs> flashing lights for Robillard up the front straight on Kurt Crum. I don't know what he's going to do from that distance, but uh, Jackson Robillard on the flashers trying to maybe throw off Crum a little bit, and it might have worked. Look at that. He's up, up maybe a couple car lengths exiting turn number one. Riley Thompson looks up the inside oh, of two. Oh, man! And he had to take evasive action on the inside of the curb, and he somehow kept it on course, and they'll continue their fight, but that was really dicey. Oh, tons of curb at turn four. You're going to throw him wide at turn six, but he catches it. Doesn't lose the back end of the car so far, and it actually looks like it helped him go fast that time through. Uh, so he kind of played the curb roulette and won. <laughs> Every once in a while, you do that. Uh, but Thompson trying to cling onto the back and actually maybe making a smart conscious decision to not race Robillard too hard because if Robillard has the pace to catch Crum, it's just going to bring Thompson with him and then Thompson might make the podium. Absolutely, Jackson Robillard, that number 98 car, the uh, kind of the paint, the paint, uh, I don't know, what do, paint splatter paint scheme that he's got on that car. Great looking vehicle he's got out on course tonight. And back in TCR, we're, gonna, we're coming to the white flag this time in GS, but let's Okay, take a look at our TCR leaders. Chris Deshong in the 41, a three-second lead, and he has led every lap so far with Kyle Herbst three seconds back in the Sour Patch Kids car, but Elias Roman closing in and was a little bit slower than Herbst last time by, but within half a second, that's striking distance for sure. Yeah, those guys have been yo-yoing pretty, uh, pretty much every lap. Uh, one gets the faster lap, and then the next, the other guy gets the faster lap. So neither of these guys really pulling away or falling back, and that could, again, compress to an even four-way battle uh, although Pilatus dropped off by a bit, and Eric Mickey doesn't seem to have made a ton of progress from fourth. So maybe we found our equilibrium state for now. Most of the field has kind of spread out. There is the battle for four still raging in GS, Robillard and Thompson, fourth and fifth, two tenths between them, and Thompson seems to be a little bit better in this final sector. 
Yeah, and that maybe comes down to confidence both in pivoting the car in those point and shoot corners like turn 13 and 15, but also floating the speed through the big high speed carousel as he's going to look all the way off track, opening up the entry to turn number 20. And he's going to put the power down running wide. That's full MX5 Cup kind of territory out there. Uh, but no run on the back end of Jackson Robillard. Robillard doing a great job getting off of these corners and minimizing the opportunity for Thompson, who's oh. still going to try to look to the inside. Really aggressive block from the 98 car. Fair, but definitely protecting up for the 56 now coming back on the outside of turn two. If you can hold the outside here, you can force a move into the S's that might work. They're not going to make it. White flag in the air for the leaders, and Jackson Robillard took all four tires below the curbing, and that's really dicey and, and tricky to avoid a penalty there. But it looks like he has held on for now. Riley Thompson right on that rear bumper. And Nicholas Johnson's in this fight, too. It's a three-horse fight for fourth place in Grand Sport for now. Yeah, all this back and forth has brought Johnson, who was kind of lurking up into there. Who's going to pound off the back end of Riley Thompson exiting the n turn number nine? And now Thompson can't be full attack because he's got to be some defense. Look at Johnston to the inside. Here he comes on the brakes, late on the brakes. Brake rotor is glowing red hot into the braking zone. And Johnston goes through to fifth. Thompson gets run out wide over the edge of the turf. And he's going to have to come back by turn 12. Johnson, nice courteous move there to give Thompson a... Uh, Johnson and Thompson. Yeah, Johnson doing a good job uh, giving room for Thompson to come back on. And both of those drivers, with how wide they went, actually got a run on Robillard. So maybe a mistake from Robillard getting off that corner, not quite as well as he wants. Now he protects in the 98 to the inside, the 28 around the outside. Johnston going for fifth place. Uh, sorry, from fifth to fourth, maybe in one lap. And they were almost three wide from him. And now they are three wide overlaid like Blue Angels through the stadium section here in Austin, Texas. And Robillard still hangs on. Thompson up the inside. Now he's back to driver's right. Has to cross over that 28 if he wants a look at fifth or fourth. Mm, does a good job protecting. Puts the car exactly where it needs to be. The 28 has nowhere to go. And the 56 just kind of still waiting. This is the final lap, final couple corners for race number two. Checkered flag waves for DJ Alessandrini. He comes through the final corner. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Alessandrini right back on top where he belongs. Winner in race two for Renzo Sports Car Challenge at Coda. Second place, Ken Seal. He's got it. Kurt Crum and Jackson Robillard. Here comes Johnson to the outside. Drag race to the line. Contact oh, between... Touch. Oh, man, and it's going to be Johnson and Thompson. Fifth and sixth. What a race between those two drivers. Yeah, big, big congrats to Jackson Robillard protecting in that last couple of laps there. Zach Buchanan coming on through for looks like it'll be 11th place in the number 40 Project 2 car. Christopher oh, Lapras boy. in the 183. Sorry, in TCR, we have four cars for the win somehow. Krista Shong had something happen, and now Kyle Herbst is all over the back of him in turn 13. So we have four cars all again in TCR. That somehow this class always just has the best racing, uh, and it's happening one more time. Herbst all over the back of DeShong. The Sour Patch Kids car opens up the egg entry to turn number 15, tries oh, to get the power down. Here he comes. To the right. He's got overlap. He DeShong doesn't have to let him back on course, but he did. That was extraordinarily courteous, and he gave Herbst the inside lane contact now. He gets shoved out wide through the carousel. Now down to the apex. He's got two corners left to take it back. Herbst takes the lead away with an aggressive move in 15. Can he hold on for two more corners? Oh, he tries it. He gets to turn in. They're both going to run wide and watch out for Elias Roman, who's got to run. He's going to look to the inside and turn number 20. Here he Deep comes. On the brakes, into the back of Herbst. And they all go wide. Wow. And drag race to the end, and it'll be Kyle Herbst winning in TCR in race number two. What a battle. And a whole, uh, that, that just went all the way down to the end there, Tomo, didn't it? All the way through yeah. the carousel and the final two corners. What a race. Yeah, Cap Eric Mickey capitalizing in heartbreak for Chris Chong led every single lap but the one that mattered and fell off the podium in the last corner in the 41 car. But Herbst kind of shoving his way to the front. Roman goes with him. Eric Mickey capitalizes for the podium. Andrew, Andrew Mickey, Will Robbins are fighting for 11th place as they come back to the start finish line. Checker flag waving for these guys. It will be Mickey in 11th, Robbins in 12th, Benson Ty and Louis Alessi, the last two drivers to come across the line. That was an exceptional race, Tom. That was a blast. So let's take a look at her results uh, in race number two. It was DJ Alessandrini. That was the one at the top of the standings when all was said and done on a 6.4 second lead. But how Seal did eat into that towards the end. So as we head to next week at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, I don't think we've seen everything that uh, Ken Seal has to offer. I think he might go for a couple more wins next week as well. Yeah, we were destined for a good race no matter what. But that top 18 invert really did it in. And we had some incredible battles, some incredible wars. 
a little bit of chaos through the middle there in both classes and then that awesome compression down for the podium in tcr uh redenso sports car challenge delivers week one we've got seven more weeks to go on a completely different track next week in my opinion the best track in north america canadian tire motorsports park fast flowing really challenging in both of these cars it's going to be a time to watch it's going to be a blast to watch. We're going to let those results finish scrolling on through. We're going to jump to break. We're not done quite yet, though. Stick around for driver interviews to talk to our race winners and podium finishers. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back live to Sim TV in the first round of the Rodenzo Sports Car Challenge. We're here with our Race 1 TCR winner, Eric Mickey, in the Bombshell 88. Eric, tonight was a spectacular race for you in Race 1. You ended up winning that thing, and then Race Number 2 came back all the way to third place after you started in 18th in class. Walk us through your night and Race 2 especially, climbing through the field. Yeah, Race 1, um, I got a better starting position than I was anticipating. Um better start of the race than I was anticipating and was able to uh, keep the car clean. I think that was the key to race one. Race two, once I realized we were starting at the back and that's what the inversion was, then I knew I had to try to survive some carnage. So that was the goal um, since the start, just surviving carnage and taking what I could get. And I just so happened to be in the fight for the lead on the last lap, which was a lot of fun. Next week, we had a Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, a very different circuit, a lot more flowy, and the TCR cars, uh, probably a bit more fun to drive, as Tama would probably agree with that, at a place like Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. So next week, uh, do you think you're going to be up inside the top five kind of the same way you were this week, or do you think it'll be a, a lot more challenging next week to stay up at the top of the grid? Just based on my previous experience with that, with that track, I would have to say it might be a struggle, but I'll have to see. I haven't run this car there, so I don't know if I'm going to be on top of it or not, but uh, I'm going to do what I can to make sure that. All right. So Eric Mickey race one TCR winner. Congrats, Eric. We'll see you next week. Thanks you guys. Absolutely. We move on now to our race two TCR winner. It was Kyle Herps that got it done in his number 89. Kyle, what a battle there at the end. It came down to the last lap in the final couple of corners to steal away a win from the drivers up at the front of the field. What was that like chasing down those leaders and, and how fun was that out there tonight? Oh, it was a blast. I mean, the, you know, the track itself only 
allows you to pass in a couple positions. So you kind of need to, you know, coordinate and, you know, strategize within yourself and managing the tires. And, um, you know, Tom can probably mention, you know, about how difficult it is trying to put that all together, but it was a blast, it was really close racing, a little bit of contact, but you know, the cars can kind of take some damage. So it was all fun. And Tom, I know you were watching that last lap battle between those four TCR cars. Uh, what'd you see there that, that Kyle Herbst did that got him the victory there? Was it waiting till the end to make that pass or what was technically the right moves that he made to get himself in that position? Well, I'm sure he can tell you better than I can, but I think it, the moment it came down to when you were, you know, you just held yourself on the inside after that runoff of 15 into the carousel. Curious to, to know actually from you how you got back up that close, because uh, when we cut away the previous lap, it didn't look like it was going to happen. Uh, I was gaining like a second or so each lap, and then I think Elias had a cut penalty, which kind of helped. He kind of let me go, so I didn't really have to battle for him. But I think it was all after the uh, the back straight going into the next complex, into the break, and we were getting all the time. So I, I knew it was going to be really close looking at the uh, the differentials. I didn't think it was going to work, and the next thing you know, he was kind of on top. So I don't know if he made a mistake, but I'm not going to complain. Kyle Herbst, winner in TCR race number two. Kyle, congratulations. Good luck next week at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We move on now to our race two winner. We'll talk to DJ Alessandrini next in the GS number 91. DJ, it was a six and a half second lead that uh, you drove away with, but race one was a little bit of trouble for you tonight. Yeah, it's, you know, things happen. Sorry if I'm a little distracted. I'm qualifying for another league I'm in right now. So <laughs> can you interview me in a second? <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to DJ. Always on the move as he is. We'll be back with you in a little bit, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He never stops racing, does he, Tomo? <laughs> oh, my God. Never, ever. We'll see if Ken Ausiel can talk to us. Hey, Ken, race one winner, second place in race two. Are you there? Yeah, hey, guys. Hey, what's up? You're not qualifying, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, uh, Ken, tonight, race one, it was a race victory. Came down to the last corner between you and Riley Thompson. Race two, though, had a little bit more to deal with before he could get back up into second. Walk us through your night. Yeah, so race one started okay. Uh I haven't really qualified well here for whatever reason. So got a decent qualifying and I'm like, okay, uh, let's battle Riley. And we'd be pretty much just pulled away. And I'm like, ah, I'll just follow behind him. He made a, a cut course mistake and then uh, essentially handed the win to me. I, th I felt like I could defend it relatively easily, even though he had the draft and then man race two, that was starting 19th. That was, that was pretty wild. Just, I'll, I'll just say lucky to avoid that stuff. There was, there was not much skill involved in avoiding some of those. So. Yeah, we saw one incident between two cars, which went both ways in the exit of turn two, and you just kind of looked like you had to check up really hard, but somehow threaded the needle. Was that the only one? Did we catch the one, or was it just like that for laps and laps? That was actually the last one. There was a, a couple, maybe three before that, but that was that was by far the scariest. Then I saw uh, saw the guy starting to spin, and he saved it, and then ended up in front of us. And unfortunately, uh, I think Chris Lappers got caught up in that, but I dodged it somehow. That, that was definitely just luck. Ken Ausiel, first and second place tonight in GS. Ken, uh, congratulations on that run. Hey, what about Canadian Tire Motorsports Park next week? How do you think you'll run there compared to DJ and uh, and uh, Riley Thompson? Because he's been proven to be pretty quick so far. Yeah, both of those guys are real fast, especially this week. I think Riley was probably the fastest. But uh, Motorsport, uh, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, I don't know. That, that should be interesting. I, I've not driven this car there. So turn two is definitely going to be an adventure on cold tires. I'll say that. All right, Ken Seal first and second tonight. He should be leading the GS points by quite a sizable margin as we leave Circuit of the Americas. Ken, thanks for talking. We'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. On now to our second place in race one, TCR driver. It was Christian Gritzko. Christian, tonight was a really good race for you in race number one. Uh, race two, you ended up coming back in ninth place in category, so it didn't go quite as smoothly for you, but just walk us through your night in TCR. Well, it's my first time ever uh, driving this car. Uh, race one, I really wasn't expecting to start in the top three, but I was happy to do it. Um, honestly, the racing is a lot closer than what I'm used to because I usually race F3 cars and everyone normally gives each other space because those cars are pretty sensitive. Um, but overall, it was a fun night. Even though the second race was kind of hectic for me, I had fun cl trying to climb my way through the field. And let's talk about next week, Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. That is a very fast track with a lot of sweeping corners. How do you think you'll stack up there uh, in the field compared to this week at Coda? 
Uh, I'm not sure because, uh, again, the TCR is a new car for me. I don't know how it's going to handle there, but uh, most sport is my home track and it's one of my favorites. So uh, I'm hoping to perform uh, at least on par with today. Christian Gritzko, second in race one in TCR, comes home in with another top 10. So two top 10s to start the season off, Christian. Congratulations, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much, guys. And I think we're going to talk to Riley Thompson as well, who came home in second place in race one. Riley uh, just came up a little bit short in that first event, came home sixth in race two. Uh, talk us through your first race, because you had a great battle there with Ken Ossiel. Yeah, that was a great race with Ken, trying to keep in front of him the whole time. I was really on my toes. Uh, ended up picking up a slowdown, how to serve that, and that so so for me behind him. But trying to chase him back down after, I knew we were pretty close together. And I thought it would be hard to make the move. And yeah, it definitely was trying to make the outside work. Race I'm two. Curious. Oh, go ahead, John. Go ahead. I was actually curious on your, your thoughts for the invert, because you uh, and Ken and a bunch of other guys, I'm sure you've dealt with inverts before, but top 18, that's a pretty serious invert. Um, and we talked to Ken about how that really uh, luck was more than anything on his side getting through the field the way that he did. What are your thoughts going forward on the season? The, the approach to the invert race, uh, is there one, or is it just kind of close your eyes and pray that you're making it? Uh, I'd say it's like Ken said, it's just trying to hope you're lucky trying to make it through the field. Otherwise, because <laughs> I got caught up in one of the hairpins, I got caught up in a little pile up and that cost me for the rest of the race I had no straight line speed so the only thing i could do was try and do whatever i could in the corners but overall inverts are interesting i think personally i think they could be a little bit shorter maybe like 15 max but uh yeah a little bit should be interesting for the whole season all right riley hey nice runs tonight two solid top 10 runs for the you in that 56 good luck next week at most part thank you guys We've got one last driver to talk to. It's Elias Roman, who came home in second in TCR in race number two. Elias, a lot of great battles out there. It came all the way down to the end. Uh, talk us through that battle between really turns 12 and 20 uh, on that last lap. Hey, Elias, got a copy? Doesn't look like we got Elias Roman. So, Tom, that looks like that'll do it for the interviews here tonight. But uh, what a first round. I know we had some technical issues that I'm going to be consulting some staff very sternly about after the conclusion of this broadcast. But we had a spectacular time up here in the booth. Uh, Circuit of the Americas is a spectacular racetrack, a full grid of GS and TCR machines. Uh, what a blast. And uh, how excited are you for next week? Because I can't wait. I'm very excited. And I think, you know, from my from real world experience, um, Canadian Tire Motorsports Park is one of the unique tracks that the TCR cars are faster than GS cars uh, most of the lap. Now, obviously, there's the giant back straight up the hill. The GS cars are very fast up that. But almost everywhere on the lap, the TCR cars, in real life at least, are faster everywhere uh, at that track. So I think we're going to see, as much as we uh, you know, we saw that, that interclass action this week, um, especially with those inverted starts, next week we could see a lot more cross-class action as the TCR cars may be coming into their own with all the downforce versus... Uh, the less downforce, more floaty came in. Absolutely. We're going to let you roll through our results one last time. You're looking at the racetrack down below. It is covered in darkness because the sun has set here in Austin, Texas, and the sun is set on the first of eight rounds of this championship. If you want to know the schedule, just stick around. We'll show it to you as soon as the results finish scrolling on through, and we'll head into next week at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. 8.15 p.m. will be when we launch live again next week. Uh, if you want to watch more Sim TV, make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, join. If you want to support us at three different levels, there's perks for each level, including exclusive behind the scenes content as well. And you can join us tomorrow night. Scars Ferrari Challenge will be heading to Olton Park. And then Saturday night, we've got Outsider Racing League, and they continue their championship. Sunday, Indy Elite Series action. They'll be heading to Barber Motorsports Park. So that's a fun Indy car round with the new Aero Screen that will come into patch tomorrow for iRacing. Uh, and then uh, all sorts of stuff. We got streaming Monday through Friday, each and every single week. And then we've got Saturday and Sunday as well. So no excuses uh, with the whole situation right now with COVID-19. You're all at home. Make sure you subscribe to SimTV and stick around for more. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week.